We've seen what a good vac wall with the impale follow-up can do in a team fight, and now yeah. you have a way to kind of break off that big initiation from GXR. Drop the Winter's Curse, you can kind of save yourself, you can save your Terror Blade, buy him some time to get Sunder off with a Cold Embrace. It is a pretty good solution to what GXR wants to do, and it's going back a bit to that healing meter. We haven't seen it so much in the, in the closed qualifiers. Feels like it has taken the back seat, but GXR, they get a hero that you've been talking about to me privately. Mike, the Abaddon comes up. We've seen this hero Love do a lot hero. of work. It's just such a great frontliner. The shield's obnoxious. The dispel's super strong. And you have the Darkseer Abaddon combination. Down the line, when you have the Ags and the Darkseer, you have a lot of additional HP to toss out onto people. That is true. The effective HP is certainly going to be there for GXR. And I think the Abaddon pick's just very good against the Lion, right? Because you can purge off the stun, you can purge off the Hex. Sometimes you can catch you can catch the finger with the aphotic shield and that can be that can be kind of nice to make sure that somebody can't get bursted down But yeah, most of all the stun and hex out of this lion not gonna be quite as effective as it once was T1 we'll see how they want to respond to this They do need a mid they need they do need an off lane right now for the side of T1 So you're looking for that cuckoo and that Carl hero Curious to see what Carl does go for in the uh, in the mid lane. Feels like for Carl, we always kind of expect him to be on something like the Doom, which is you know his, his real signature. It feels like these days that Doom, but you see it was banned out. Looks like they're gonna go for the Cuckoo Hero first and go for the Brewmaster. Just quite nice because you do have both supports who can kind of uh, ignite the Cinder Brew, which is always nice in the laning phase. And he's very annoying to deal with throughout yeah, all stages. This is one way to kind of handle the Abaddon, right? You can just Cyclone him up, ignore right. him in the complete team fight, take him out for a few seconds. No shield, no Mist Coil heal. It pretty much just removes the hero. So that's one great way to manage wow. that in the middle of the fight. GXR, they do go into the Luna pick. Luna into Terribly. Mm. That's a pretty ballsy pick from GXR. We have seen that win out maybe once or twice if you play quick enough. And to be fair to GXR, if you consider the rest of their lineup with a Vac Wall, with, your, with the Impales coming through, the Vac can really help the Luna just pump out damage with the Glaives and with the Eclipse. So in that sense, the team fight is building up. You do worry about this core matchup, though. Once the Terror Blade's big enough, uh, the Luna's not going to feel great. It feels like, as a Luna, in this matchup, you do need uh, a farm advantage, an item advantage to overtake the Terror Blade uh, later down the line, and it tends to equalize as the game drags on. So we'll see if GXR can get that fast start going here for IYD. It's going to be tough, though. Like, even you, you talked about it, but TB with Reflection, it, it's going to be kind of rough to go into as a Luna. Like, we, we've said this over and over again throughout the group stage, but the Luna just never feels good going against TB unless you can close the gap and, you know, maybe get that Eclipse off. But even then, it, it just doesn't ever feel like enough because you're still going to have the Sunder to rely on and you might have a BKB on this Terror Blade. It looks like a tough game for GXR already, just based off these drafts. But let's see how they finish them off. Uh, both teams, they do require a mid lane right now for either side. Kind of curious to see what route they go down again. I mean, if you're T1, if you're GXR, you're kind of both looking to create space for Lunar and Terror Blade. Like, it's not, it, it's not really rocket science. Both these heroes like to hit jungle and just farm up stacks. Uh, so, you want these space-creating, tempo-setting kind of calls in that mid lane now for either side. It's just a matter of what kind of route they go down. Yeah, it definitely is the case. Uh, I mean, the big one that comes to mind is like TA, but in a Terrorblade and in a Luna lineup could compete with farm too much. So we'll have to see what else is on their mind. Uh, Lina's in the, uh, in the pool if you want to play with a burst for either side. Could be one way to get that done. You only really need the Yules to be active. Um, Ember is gone, but Void Spirit still in the pool. If you kind of want to go with that pace with mobility as well, could kind of pay off for either side. GXR, they do pick up the Void Spirit. So they take that mobility, they take that early spikes you can get with a Void Spirit, and it's just very stable in lane. It's kind of hard to harass out. In some matchups, it can win out as well, especially if you land your Astral Remnant out on time and just get your harassment off. So it's a stable way to set up here for GXR T1. I mean, you mentioned Doom earlier on. It was first phase ban, so Carl's not going to have that option. Going to have to look elsewhere. 
I think mean, if you want a spirit brother, you could try Storm, but it's pretty greedy with a Terrorblade. I, I think Lena is not that bad of an option here. Like you brought it up earlier, but I, I think it wouldn't be too bad into the Void Spirit. Maybe a little bit annoying to CS against, but the amount of harass you can pump out with that Lena uh, could be really annoying here as T1, though. They will go ahead and pick it up. Fair enough. So there you go, John. Very nice predictions today, sir. You're, you're on target for the first game. We'll see if you can keep it up throughout the rest of the stream. We might pay you today. Just so you know, we, we're going to consider it. We'll, we'll consider paying you for your casting today, sir. Still T1 versus GXR. Drafts are finished, John. I've got to ask you the hard question. First game of the day. Who came out with the better draft? Hmm. I'd lean towards T1 just because they've got the Terror Blade. It's a savage special. He knows the timings to hit. They've got the Brewmaster to kind of isolate whatever hero might cause some issues. They could isolate the Abaddon, as mentioned. Then you don't need to worry about your stuns being dispelled on your Lion. You've got a great lane and a Brewmaster Lion to play with as well. The mid matchup for Lina's not too bad, but the Void Spirit can kind of dance around it as well. So it's a bit of, bit of a back and forth one. Yeah. As the Void Spirit's Resonant Pulse can block out the right click harass from Carl. It won't do anything about the Dragon Slave and LSA. So Carl can still leverage that. And I think it's just a lot easier to play with the Terrorblade as your win condition. You can kind of play fast. You can also take it slow because Terrorblade late game. His issues with Metamorphosis, people just itemize away from it. You know, they just get Ags, they get Refresh. So it doesn't feel as much of an issue. Whereas for Luna, it feels like you have a mid game spike. You kind of want to get one or two big items, look for the objective push, look for team fights when Eclipse is up, and then start to. Try to push towards that high ground while you're strong. Fair enough. So you are favoring T1 going into this first game. I would have to agree with you. I mean, it just goes back to the carry versus carry matchup. I, I don't think this Luna is going to have much fun uh, against this TB this game. But let's see how they make it work. Game one between T1 and GXR of this best of two series. First series of the group stages all together. And John, one thing we never brought up. So we've got our boy Whitemon back. Now, Whitemon's famous for hitting the Roshan during Pro Series. Does does he hit the Roshan, John? Do you think he hits it before the game starts? I'd like to see it. I don't I don't know if he will. He's not been doing it for months now. No. And, yeah, uh, I, I want to see if he does. He is sort of in the area. We haven't seen it yet. One more thing we haven't talked about, like... This is a T1 versus old T1 lineup. If you remember, the first few iterations of Tier 1 was basically most of the players from GXR. Right. So it, it's an interesting matchup that you don't tend to see all too often, but should make for some great viewing. Like this, obviously, this um, this iteration of T1 has had a better run, but GXR hasn't been doing too bad as well. Maybe they have something to prove. It looks like Savage is talking in uh, in Thai, Polis, and I'm not sure what language he's talking in. Nobody wants to talk in English. John, can you translate, John? I'm pretty sure you no, can't read these languages. I, I can't read. No, I can't okay. read English even. So I know what help I'd be to you, Mike. All right. Let these players talk it out in their own languages. T1, they're going to secure the, the top bounties. And it looks like GXR. We are going to have a, a quick disconnection here from Alacrity. But they will be able to secure both bottom bounties, no problem. Any lanes you think we should watch out for in particular? Like any spicy lane? Oh, Jesus, there's more people disconnecting. All right, let's not go too far, boys. One at a time. Starting to get a little bit worried as, as, as more people just disconnect from the game. Any lanes, though, John, that we should be, uh, be, we should be watching carefully? I'm keen to see where Cuckoo actually goes. He's stuck right now in the bot lane. He's hanging in the tree line. He chopped the tree down. Looks like they might go for that lane swap. Maybe put Savage up top. Savage is kind of lined up to walk towards the top lane. So it's a bit of a lane swap here. Keen to see how much they can get done. Like the Terrorblade avoids the Darkseer Nyx lane, which again, when you don't have Metamorphosis up, it feels pretty painful for Savage to last hit in melee form against the Iron Shells. And those are two tanky heroes. So you're going to have a Luna versus Terrorblade lane, which feels a little bit more manageable and gives you some potency with your early reflection levels. Like we see some Terrorblade players go for that level one. Uh, Luna, once levels are built up, even just a value point in reflection is going to be a big nuisance for that hero. So it's kind of one way to manage it. And I think that should lead to some interesting shenanigans from Cuckoo. Like we talked about the Brewmaster, uh, getting that Cinder Brew off with the line is going to be pretty nice. And we'll just have to see how aggressive Cuckoo wants to get against the Darkseer Nyx. That's a, still a very tanky lane, not the easiest to harass out. And if you cop too much damage from those shelts and stuns, it can kind of turn the other way. Certainly so. 
Uh, I think that's part of, part of the reason why just Cuckoo goes down to the bot lane, right? Like, you don't want Terrorblade 23 Savage just being there, taking all these Iron Shell damage away. <laughs> it, it's not going to be very much fun, as we are going to have another pause, which is also not very much fun. <laughs> Carl is uh, going to have a disconnection now as well, so... <laughs> Here we go again. I guess it is, it's pro series. Whoa. This happens every time, which is where this question came up, John. But have you had merienda today? I'm asking you a bit early this time. It is early. It is early. I haven't yet because it's like two o'clock. Ideal time is like three o'clock. You know, if you, if you want to get that perfect merienda time, it's like three to four. And that's when you bring out the bibinka. You bring out the uh, cape, uh, cape barako and have a good time. Not yet, but I'll probably have a cup of coffee later. Uh, you know, uh, to go along with my mate mate, I've been really enjoying it. I think I've been drinking a bit too much, actually, but I guess there's no <laughs> such thing as too much of that one. No. Mid lane, you've got Alacrity and Carl against each other. Looks like, I was saying this earlier, but Carl should have a, a pretty decent advantage, right? Like, at least in terms of harassment, it's going to be hard for Alacrity to really decide when he goes in for those CS. And you expect Carl to, to really harass him quite hard as, as time goes on. Yeah, I like that he's already set up for that lane as well. He's going for the Dragon Slave level one. We tend to see a lot of Lina still stick to ELC. So just having the Dragon Slave leads to easier wave clear, easier harass. Still going for the Fiery Soul as level one Resident Pulse doesn't block out too much damage. So you can still win out the trade harassment with Alacrity. And you can kind of see Carl just pulling ahead in the first few waves, already setting up. Alacrity, by the time he hits three or four though, it should feel a lot more playable and you can't allow him to keep landing these remnants as well. That's his big DPS moment. Lots of right click, right -click damage can come out. And if you cop too much from Carl with the remnants, you will kind of lose out. So it's a balancing act for both sides. Yeah, it certainly is. Of course, at the top lane, you've got White Mon there with 23 Savage against In Your Dream on that Luna. And well, there's your reflection out. Meta popped as well with the Earth Spike. It just happened so darn fast. In your dream, he's gonna try and juke this one out, but he is completely alone right now. Polison's on the side trying to get a pull off, and in your dream, he is gonna be able to TP in the end, so it's not all too bad. He will just have to take a salve off Polison, and bot lane is where the first blood does occur. Mizu is able to secure Cuckoo, is now Zephyr, is also gonna be chased down. But this is that combo we talked about in the off lane. The, the Dark Sea Nyx Assassin, very difficult to deal with. Yeah, it's, it's just a lot of damage output early on and a lot of durability on these two melee heroes. I mean, it's two melees versus a melee range, but there's not much Winter Wyvern at level one can do to stop it. So you, you're going to have to wait for a little bit more on Sephir to come out. Maybe once he has the Splinter Blast, the trades go a little bit better. But Mizu's already using his first full set of mana really well. He hits level three, level two Iron Shell up. That's when the lane starts to get really painful for Cuckoo, and he's just going to have to watch his spacing here. Watch how far deep they get dived. Yeah, absolutely. They're getting dived again. Joe Cam, he wants to go in. He knows he's got the advantage with this Iron Shell, but he won't go for the Impel. In fact, Cuckoo now is going to turn around. They get the Ignite on the Cinder Brew, and Joe Cam, he's trying. He'll salve up. He might just make it. Just barely in the tree line, but Cuckoo, he'll go after Mizu instead. Mizu's trying to bottle up and does make it out as the impel is there from Joe Cam. They will just barely survive. That's a pretty nice one for GXR. Unfortunately, that does force Joe Cam all the way back to the base. So he's going to have to TP back in. Mizu with a bottle is going to be topped up and ready to spam out a couple more of those iron shells. Carl? So that's the spike we're looking for up top, though. Oh, Carl's taking a lot of damage mid lane, John. Carl? He'll be okay. He'll barely survive top lane. Looks like nothing's really happening here. In your dream, quite low in HP, so he does have to be a little bit cautious as they will have the reflection in just a moment. But they won't have the metamorphosis up, so in your dream, he should be okay, at least for now. Though I say that, Polison may not be fine as they chase him down now. They get the Curse of Avernus on the Abaddon himself. But they won't be able to follow up as Whitemon. He didn't have the mana for the Earth Spike. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of back and forth. We saw Savage drop low. He had to get uh, salved up. Alacrity. Yeah, he gets the... Uh, no, he didn't get the water rune. Zephyr took that away as well. Nice little rotation there from our Wyvern. Does secure the mid kill onto Alacrity. And now, Carl, he'll be able to go fill up his bottle again with his own water rune. Yeah, it, it's just a great feeling right now for Carl. He's way ahead in CS, about a full wave ahead. Of Alacrity, he's going to have a slight level advantage now as well. Once he hits 6, he could look for Laguna plays. And Alacrity is just kind, kind of have to deal with it. He's like a full, almost a full level behind. 
So that level 6 spike for Carl is going to line up soon. And that's when you get a bit scared for Lakitu. He does need that mobility with the Astral Step to kind of juke and drive around here. And still a ways off. Go Cam. You need the resources. Cuckoo, he's taking a lot of damage. Mizu, he's going to be able to trade their lives. So Joe Cam goes down, but you get Cuckoo, and that's going to be well worth it for the side of GXR. It's Mizu proving to be very annoying with that Iron Shell, and I, I can't say I'm surprised. I mean, double Iron Shell, it's just too much damage. Yeah, it really is. And as a Winter Wyvern, you can't really block that out with a Cold Embrace. You don't even have the value point in it for Zephyr. Uh, that's a great kill to get because you get the solo Radiant EXP on the Darks here. So Mizu hits his level 5. He has his Iron Shell at level 3. And the damage output now, if they do that again, it will most certainly land him the kills. Cuckoo, I mean, he's been sort of struggling in this offlane for a bit. Lagging a bit behind in CS. Died a couple of times. It needs to be a lot more cautious. Like, they're always constantly shoved in on a creep wave as well. And they don't have creeps to just kind of tank through for them. Because of how aggressive... GXR's posturing is, so they just kind of have to take what they can get and play a lot more passive here. Yeah, certainly so. I mean, luckily he is playing Brewmaster anyway, so I, I suppose in in a sense it's just all about the XP, but you do want that Midas into the Aghanim Scepter, and it, it is quite important as Zephyr's made another rotation mid. Lacrity does have the step charges up, so he won't be in too much danger unless they get the Light Strike Array. Light strike array. But Carl's not even going to try for it. He'll just he'll just let him walk out. I suppose Joe Campbell's around anyway, just in case they made the jump in. Money so it is going to be a two for two. Slight net worth lead to T1. Though all things being said and done, GXR, they are still having a really even game here. So definitely not as one-sided as the odds would have kind of envisioned as Mizu. Does get stunned up. The Cyclone was there just in the nick of time. They're going to kill off the Darks here. The rotation from Carl, it does end up paying off. Savage though. Yeah, he's in trouble. Curse of Avernus is there, but they won't have the damage. They just can't lock him down long enough, and Savage, he is pretty low, so he may have to just start rotating into the jungle now. Uh, looks like Whitemon will give him over a tango, and well, Savage, he might just stick around in the lane. Yeah, he, if he's not zoned out, if he doesn't die, doesn't mind too much, does not have Metamorphosis though, and that trial lane for GXR, it's still sort of there. Joe Cam's just rotating mid now. There has been a couple of stacks built up here on T1's end. So they're going to have a resource for Savage or for Carl to dip into. Uh, wasn't scouted out yet by GXR, and that's always good. Uh, in your dream is just trying to shove in this tower. He does have good magic damage to rip through Savage if he's not careful. That he does. Opting for the uh, the three levels in Lucent Beam makes enough sense. You, you definitely want to just harass Savage with that over and over again. If you have the mana pool and... Well, in your dream, he does have some raindrops and a stick, or rather one, so it does help. Bottom lane, Cuckoo ends up dying again to Alacrity Ooh. this time. However, Alacrity will die. Now Mizu's in trouble as the Earth Spike does come out from Whitemon, but Mizu, he'll drag them back into the wall. Whitemon, he'll just go ahead with the Mana Drain and take care of the illusion. So one for one in the end, but I, I can't say Alacrity dying for, for a Cuckoo Brewmaster is that worth. No. I mean, we've seen Cuckoo take this position on his... Pause tree before, he plays a much more sacrificial role. He's willing to die for his team as long as he knows Carl and Savage are getting farm. They most certainly are. So these that's probably not hurting the game plan of T1 all too much. 4 to 3, less than 1k lead still in the way of T1. Uh, GXR, they need a little bit more going here, especially for Lakati. And he does make his way back bot for Cuckoo again. Yeah, Cuckoo, he's in trouble. Another nice Aether Remnant out from Zephyr into the Dissimulate. But Cuckoo, he's going to try and go for a run. They do have another step charge, Alacrity. He just wants to be able to land this one as Cuckoo. He'll run towards the left, but Alacrity is still on the chase. I don't believe he's in range, but the Aether Remnant right on the side. But it won't matter because they do get the Earth Spike and the split out. Alacrity now going to be in danger. He's going to try and dissimulate back towards White One. And we'll go after him, but the stuns are there. Cuckoo, he'll just hold him down. Another step charge by White Mon. He'll survive with the Fairy Fire. And now the Cold Embrace. He just won't die until Alacrity dies him. Himself. And now Mizu, he could be in danger, but no, he'll try to chase down Cuckoo instead. And he'll go for the easy TP, but the curse is there. They just don't want to commit because they don't have anything to secure the kill onto Mizu after. But it's still a nice trade for T1. Like, you got a pause 5 lion. But it's for the sake of your mid-void spirit. 
Yeah. It's not worthwhile for GXR. And you can kind of see GXR feels pressure to make these plays happen with Alacrity, with his level 7, level 8 spikes. He knows he has to be around a map. He knows he's not going to be sitting in that jungle, as that's the designated space for In Your Dream. So he wants to keep finding these kills. It's just unfortunate it took a bit too long. Brewmaster is a bit tanky to dive and came right off the back of the next primal split. And that does cost him. So GXR still sort of clumping around bot though. Mizu Jokam still around the area. Probably just going to look to secure that push. Look at this in your dream. Look at the stacks. They're getting the curse of Avernus off in preparation for in your dream. So he has a, a, a mini mask of Mandus going on from Polison, And then he's got his real mask of Mandus going on. Very nice little play here from GXR, and this is really going to allow In Your Dream to escalate and farm. Those are a lot of stacks being made. Oh yeah, he's all the way up there in that fort, only behind Carl right now. So he's way above what Savage has uh, in terms of what's coming out. And this is where T1's falling a bit flat. They haven't played in that top jungle. They only really planted the sentry in the ancient camp, but they haven't done anything about these large camps. So In Your Dream gets a huge injection of gold. Um, is going to be farming into the Dragonlance next. Of course, this means he doesn't have Eclipse. I think you're fine with that. You don't really want In Your Dream to join these early fights anyway. And the side of T1 has been ignoring him. I think at some point, T1 might want to start getting some rotations out, but they might have to wait for, say, White Mons level 6 on the line to really be comfy. Maybe just waiting for that burst with a finger before really committing to a deep rotation. 5-4 to four now. Fairly quiet kind of game thus far. We haven't really seen a, a big kind of team fight between these two teams yet. It's been a bit of back and Dyer's forth. To be expected though, when you've got a Terra Blade Luna kind of matchup, it, it just happens. They just want to farm the jungle. Both teams will, will give them that time to, to get those first few core items up before they start making the rotations over. I say that, I believe I just heard a smoke, and there you go, GXR. They're going to smoke up as three. In Your Dream's going to follow suit. He doesn't have the Eclipse up, though. I believe he might have a skill point just waiting for it. Carl, going to go in for the Invis, but it was all a trap. They look to burst him down, and they do. Now the step charge onto White Mon. They'll try after the Lion. In fact, they might just turn onto Cuckoo instead. But he does have the, uh, the Primal Split Charge. So he'll be okay. But it was a nice trap set there by GXR for that power rune. It does pay off. It's a nice kill on Carl, although the curse? Yeah, locking down Alacrity. Do they have the damage? Earth Spike is there, Finger is out, they'll trade. So in the end, that, that smoke rotation, while it was still worth, you lost Alacrity another time. That's his fourth death of this game one. Yeah, he has to be a lot more cautious. There's a lot of good holding T1 to Radiant lock bottom. in the Void Spirit. You can't attack. afford to just be frontlining like that for your team. And the punishment is good. Still still feels better for GXR because killing the mid with your own mid does give you a little bit more in terms of the XP trade. Carl was not there to soak. I say that, but it doesn't matter when Carl is level 12 and Alacrity is still level 9. So... With that kind of deficit, it's still not giving GXR enough to really bounce back in. They are still securing that safe farm for their Luna, though. And your dream is just clearing out the triangle. No Ancients, but they did manage to get the D-Ward on the Sentry, so it should spawn up on the next minute. And it feels like it's starting to build up here on the Luna. They are clumping around top, though. Yeah, they want Jokam. Hex is out from White Mon. No Spy Carapace going to be there. Jokam, he's just gone. Nice little setup there from Savage and White Mon. And of course, now with that metamorphosis, they will try to go after the, that tier 1 top tower. And the same will happen at the bot lane. They are just going to trade. Cuckoo needs to be careful, but he does have the split. Looks like Polison won't really be able to keep up with him anyway, though Alacrity will. The 8th the Remnant is not going to last. It hits the creep wave. Cuckoo, he's going to be just fine. No split necessary. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Yeah, it's a straightforward tier 1 for tier 1 trade. I think for a T1, they do not want to take this team fight. They're not clumped up as a big force. Carl is in this though for a bit. Yeah, he'll be alright. Yeah. Back to far. Yeah, they've got these forward wards now in the bot jungle. They've got some vision out. They've got bigger space to farm in. For In Your Dream, if you want to play in that bot jungle, you can see Savage doing the same in the top jungle now. Trying to build up. He does have the Yasha and Dragonlance. 
So the Terra Blade feels fairly powerful, still saving up for the Sanj for the full S and Y, and that's when it can start feeling even better for Savage when he shows up to these fights. For In Your Dream, he's going for the same buildup. I mean, Mask of Madness aside, it's still a Dragonlance, S and Y, so it's a relatively same buildup from both heroes you see tend to see between the Luna Terra Blade. It's just down to using your power spikes in your team fight from GXR. We haven't really seen Joe Cam scout around too much with a vendetta, and there are good sentries dropped by T1, so he's not really getting that hunt on Savage that you'd expect this lineup to do. They could find other kills, but the Terra Blade, as long as he's safe, I think T1 doesn't mind. Dyer's middle tower is Bottom lane, Joe Cam, Mizu. Gonna set up here onto Zephyr. Zephyr, he's gonna be alright. He he knows something's up. Is that Cuckoo? He could be targeted, but Cuckoo seems to have the same kind of sense here. And we'll just back away as Joe Cam does try to approach and well, it looks like the uh, the vendetta is gonna wear out anyway. Mid lane, Alacrity needs to be a little bit careful here as Cuckoo has rotated over, but he also backs off. So everyone just understanding where, where everyone else is. Just leave each other alone. I think GXR is still quite happy about this, considering In Your Dream is farming so well. But the only problem I see is Savage is quickly catching up. And I mean quickly. Yeah, and they, they just haven't hunted that terribly down. Like you'd expect with a Nyx, you could maybe look for those sneaky vendetta plays and catch him out. Although, cool. Uh, Arcane Rune taken by Joe Cam, but it may cost him his life as the Light Strike Array and Finger is out with the Laguna. <laughs> they will really just squash the bug. And GXR, they're, uh, they're going to deny the T1 mid tower, they'll let it go. That is going to open up the map a little bit here for T1, who I don't believe are anywhere near losing their own T1 mid tower. So things are looking pretty bright for them on the Radiant side. Mind you, Mizu does have the Aghanim Scepter up now, so if you're Mizu, you've got this really nice kind of HP buff for your team. Obviously a lot more Iron Chills, you keep all the lanes pushed out. And GXR eventually should be able to abuse this power spike on the dark seat. Yeah, they can look to line up. They've got a lot of tankiness on hand. They just haven't grouped up as five to get that done yet. Like, you've got the VAC uh, combinations on hand. They haven't really leveraged it. And for the most part, I think T1's response has been pretty good. They just have Savage playing up top. He's protected by one OBS ward on the top part of that jungle. He's just farming, no one's stopping him, keeping up pace with Luna. 500 gold behind is not too bad for a Terrorblade, considering that Luna's Glaives clear out camps a little bit quicker. And GXR are starting to clump up bot, perhaps looking for a bit of a tier 2 shove-in. They, ha they have all the vision here, so they've got good control. They could go for a wraparound play down mid as well if they want to. They may. They can try, but now you've got a BKB up on Carl, so he's going to be more than happy to, to stand his ground and just fight with that 9 second charge. GXR, they're having a lot of reliance here on In Your Dreams Luna. He's still farming great, but again, just 400 gold ahead of Savage, and that gap is closing. GXR, Impale, not going to be there on Cuckoo. They'll throw a some Beam out. That's going to be about it. Cuckoo, he's just going to stand there and make sure this mid T1, it, it just never needs to drop. The GXR, they need to try and commit for the mid T1, but it's just not going to happen anytime soon by the looks of it. No, they're, they're not finding that opening. Maybe it comes down to awkward lack of initiation. It looks like they might commit onto Zephyr, but he already TPs out in time. Yep. They can't even find a Winter Wyvern kill, and T1's just dancing around the map uh, really well. Like, all this attention bought, None of the attention on Savage. Your Luna is not building up a massive enough lead. We talked about it, but it does feel like you need an item advantage. Not just a slight networking advantage, an actual item up to really leverage that Lena. Although, they catch Carl. They do. Carl, he never got his BKB off. So Carl ends up getting caught out. Mizu, he'll give the tip over to Joe Cam, who did set up the killer. Now... With that Lena down, they should be able to try and pressure this mid T1 tower. T1, I don't think they want to fight without their mid laner. And that was a BKB up as well on Carl that never got used. And well, now without a buyback on your Lena, this mid T1 is certainly just gone. This T1, they huddle around the mid T1, but it, it doesn't mean anything. They're just kind of watching it go down as White Mon. 
They know he's there, the iron shells. Look at the damage output. The curse is there though. They'll hold him down. Now the split is out. A three-man earth spike as well. Just to hold them all down. But do they have the damage? Carl is still down. About to respawn in five. But they need him right now as another impulse there. They do connect on Savage. However, Joe Cam, he does drop. So they got the Nyx Assassin. GXR, as soon as they see that, they do back. Poor old Whitemon, he almost died just to Iron Shield. I love that play though, it's Balti. It's almost the same thing that happened with Carl. Carl died because he just casually Dragon Slave the mid lane, and Spike Carapace is a very nice spell against that, so. You have to watch yourself if you're the Lena in this game. If you don't have vision, you have to assume the Nyx is running around waiting for a Spike Carapace opportunity. Still, GXR shouldn't be feeling too bad. They get the mid tier one to equalize, uh, they find a decent enough kill, and they e they kind of even out the map right now. There's still a blink reveal on Mizu. They did kind of use it a while ago, but they will smoke. They've got the back wall combo ready to go. They can force a team fight with, with no Winter's Curse up. You haven't got the meta up either on T1. I, I think that's one of the big the reasons why they want to go for a fight right here, right now. Scan out is going to reveal the GXR are smoked around the Roshan pit. More than likely, they're, they're not Roshing, considering their lineup. So T1, they're just going to back off out of the triangle. They'll go for a counter smoke. You've got the curse back up. You've still got that DD and BKB on Carl. And Paulison, he's going to be there to break the smoke. He doesn't have borrowed time, but no, he schools it up now. He'll be chased down. Rest of the team gonna join him in. Cuckoo, Primal Split, not off yet. The Aether Rim not gonna lock him down, but eventually he does get it off. He will not drop to the damage output of Alacrity. And now Carl will set up onto the Void Spirit. Laguna blades him down. It'll be a two for nothing trade. And guess what, John? T1, they do have a Roshing lineup. They've got the double damage running on Carl for a little bit longer. No meta, but you don't need it when your Lina hits this hard. And GXR, you're getting caught off guard with that smoke player like just the good scan the good game sense from t1 enabling them to avoid that and go for their own play you have to worry about this uh item spikes as well bkb up now on savage and cuckoo does have the ags so he has split ready to go once more he had it earlier before that fight broke out more uptime for the brewmaster split means gxr has to think twice about who they jump first they've been jumping Ku this entire game you can't really afford to jump the Brewmaster at this point. 2k HP, way too tanky to instantly burst. You gotta find a backline. Maybe if you catch the Winter Wyvern or Lion first, that sets you up for an easier time in these fights, but it can't be the Brewmaster anymore. Savage, in your dream, gonna meet each other down to that bolt lane. That reflection, it really does start to hurt. I mean, this is in your dream without too many items up yet. It's gonna be quite detrimental later on as, as the items do come up. GXR, 3k behind now, they need to make something happen as you don't want this terribly to keep this farm up. And I always talk about this item timing, John, but once that Eye of Skadi's there, it becomes that much more difficult to deal with this terribly. It just feels like you can never get near him. Yeah, it's nearly impossible to run away with all the slows from the Reflection and the Skadi coming out. The healing reduction is going to be putting a dent on how Paulson, at least with the Mist Coil, manages to sustain that team. The shield is still going to be good. The Iron Shell added HP is still going to be good, but you're already taking away a bit of that Abaddon utility with that item pickup. GXR, it feels like they need to wait for Alacrity's Ags. Like that AoE silence and the charges on the Resident Pulse just feels way too big to ignore. It's just that the Void Spirit's been lagging behind for a long time. Even Cuckoo's managed to pull ahead, and he's died as many times in lane almost so you're missing a key power spike on gxr and t1 they're just going to keep smoking here yeah i mean absolutely you know you've got the advantage why not just keep up the pressure in the mid lane in your dream it's just going to wait for Paulison, who will break the smoke in your dream. He's moving forward. Reflections there. They'll leave him be, though. Wall has been dropped as well. There's your primal split out. They really want Paulison down on that Abaddon, and they might just be able to get him, and they do. Laguna out will get the job done. Savage, he's looking for a bit more. He's got that Aegis up, so he's feeling very confident. His reflection does connect onto In Your Dream, but he's going to be all right. They even tornado up the Luna, but they're not going to make the chase that far down. Instead, they'll start pressuring the tier 2 mid. They'll force the Glyph out. But I think if they really want, they could just keep going. 
Yeah, they know the walls down. That's one big part of GXR's team fight already off the table. In your dream, still has the Eclipse and does have the Crystallis. So you can hit hard, but you still have to be careful with your positioning here. I, I just don't think it's hard enough yet. They'll at least get the creep wave out. So Alacrity, taking care of that will mean they can't get the mid-tier 2. And now you do have Joe Cam's Ags. So these defenses are going to get a lot easier now with that Aghanim Scepter on the Nyx Assassin. But it doesn't really stop the fact that the T1s are still freely farming up now. And you're going to hit that timing with the Eye of Scardi. And then things get very, very concerned. Yeah, and then the damage output, the lack of sustain once that Scotty is up is just going to put a big dent on GXR. They're going for the top tier 2 here. The damage is good. They managed to take that out so they could capture the outpost, set up for the next Roshan if they want, which is still way off. But they can just take control of the top jungle. GXR, they tried to shove in bot, but it's still a bit too healthy to really fully commit to you. They are still staying around that bot jungle area, though. So they could maybe look to punish if someone stays behind, but they're forced to respond to that shove in top. And they can't really catch any stragglers here. Carl, that'd be a very nice pick off, but Carl, he does back off at the right moment. And it kind of goes back to the, one of the issues GXR have, where it's only the Nyx Assassin that can really catch anyone out, right? Like you, you could try to rely on Alacrity, but he's been having a rough time. And if he's not around, your only other catch is really this Nyx on Joe Cam. As you saw just then, Carl, he was alone mid lane, but nobody was there to actually stun him. Yeah, I think Alacrity with the Ags just coming out is one easier way for him to set up. But at least the Silence can do some work on the back line. Uh, maybe anyone with a BKB like Savage is still a bit too hard, but you can kind of control up Cuckoo, you can control up... Uh, the Lion, the Winter Wyvern, no problems. And that's going to have to be the softer targets to go for first to secure themselves the numbers advantage in a bigger team fight. Because that's really what Alacrity and what um, Jokam needs to look out for. They will go for the smoke play and the defense on the tier 2 bot though. That they will. Aegis is going to expire. This could be a pretty big opening for GXR if, if T1 want to keep going, but... Well, they are playing very clean right now, T1. They're going to back off. It's not going to be a fake back either. White Mon, he had two smokes, but he's going to decide against going back in. I think that's absolutely fair enough, even with the meta. There's just no reason to risk it. They'll just keep the farm game going. Uh, it's yep. working, so why stop? I have to say, I love the wards coming out from T1. They planted that Tinker Ward by the Tier 2 spot. So that gave them the information that the defense was out from GXR and they got the D word off, but they already backed T1, just mass TP up top now. They could catch out Alacrity or Mizu here. That could be a big win. Yeah, nice curse would set things up. Joe Cam, he has not been spotted out. Carl is going to get a Yule Sept up, but there's your normal punch, but there's your curse. They really want Alacrity down. Line Strike Array is there. Laguna out. None of the damage, though, is going to be timed with Alacrity. He survives through all of it. Meanwhile, on the backside, Whitemon, he does end up going down. So they got a one for nothing so far. This team won. Well, at least Cuckoo is still rushing forward, but will eventually have to back with the split ending. The curse, they just didn't time their abilities well after that curse. And Alacrity essentially just took no damage. And that's a really nice win for GXR. They managed to force some big spells out from T1. Force that first BKB use on Carl as well, well, second BKB use, and starting to tickle, trickle down to seven seconds, down to six. Uh, GXR, they can't really do too much with this opening though, and may, most of that fight was because Jokam was just invis in the middle. They had no sentries on T1, they didn't even feel the tickle of the iron shell, which I believe Jokam had on him, and they need to be aware of the Nixes. Like, a while ago they had a ton of sentries, they still have a couple of decent sentries, but I think you might have to start popping them en masse now just to ensure you're not being scouted out by a Nyx and giving GXR an opening to jump in and counteract your own fight. So this, uh, this battle be between the position ones here in your dream and, and Savage still just taking over each other in terms of net worth. You get into that point now where they're just kind of going for those final damage items on, on either core. a matter of how GXR is going to address this T1 draft once we do get into that next big team fight, but 
it just seems rather difficult as they do ping out 23 Savage mid lane. He is very far forward, but he has his team right behind him. Trying to bait them in, but GXR, they do not take it. Radiant are scanning. Still smokes available on T1, but they're not going to pop those either. Scan is out to, to spot out exactly where GXR are. Even GXR are quite hesitant to, to pop a smoke and, and try to go get something done as well. It's like both teams might just wait out the next Roshan, but that's going to be in about two minutes. So there's plenty of time for that. As there is going to be a DD rune down at the bot rune spot. But it looks like GXR are going to be the ones to be able to pick it up. They might be able to really assist them throughout that next team fight, and they are indeed going to give it over to In Your Dream as well. Let's make sure he has that big advantage in terms of damage. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty nice reveal if they do manage to take that fight their way. And T1 are playing it Blessings super safe as always. The next rush is still in the minute and a half. That could be where both sides start to collapse into that pit. You just need to see who does get that information out first. Both sides have the wards by the Roche ramp. They've got information if one side is going to go in for the Roshan, and they just go back to farming. Both sides on the right side of the river, playing safe, building up. You do have the Aeon disc finished up on Mizu. He doesn't opt for the disassembly play or the lock play, whereas Cuckoo on his Brewmaster has his locked up, so you can just pop it when he needs it. Mizu just uh, kind of going all in on the investment, figuring that he could still do something if it's popped in an unfavorable situation. Anyway, have to be careful. Long cooldown on hand. Smoke out is there for T1. So they're going to go hunting. Let's see if they can get the catch out they need. They don't have forward vision, so it is a bit of a blind smoke here. Lacrity oh. versus the... Oh, Yule Scepter as well. Are they messing it up again? Vacuum's down. Wall is out as well. Mizu trying to help out as Alacrity. He's out of there. At least for now, but now the Hex is out. White one, he's caught the big one, the Void Spirit. Does he find his way out? BKB there, Savage. He's dropping low, but he has the Sunder. They do get Joe Cam, and now the Sunder's out onto Paulson. In your dream, he's going to try and fight. Savage is trying to man fight as well. Cold Embrace is there. He's out of his BKBs. Now the Eclipse is out. Savage, he's gone too far, and he is going to die. GXR, they do manage to make it work. It's going to be a two-for-one trade with the buyback out from the Nyx Assassin. And it goes back to the initiation. They, they kind of mess it up in the exact same way with that curse into the Yule Scepter. And then it, it kind of looked like T1, they were half committed and half weren't. Yeah, it just doesn't line up when your opening doesn't lock in that Void Spirit. And he's, he's at the point where if you don't lock him in, he's going to be very hard to chase around. Big win for GXR, opens up Roshan. Aegis, Cheese, Ag Shard going their way. And the Ag Shard on the Luna is going to be a bit of a scary aspect. Like, he's just going to have that Lucent Beam spamming out right-click hits. He's got the Daedalus up on In Your Dream. So the damage is pretty sickening now from Luna. And this is the power spike of that Luna. This is the moment where you start to look for those last outer towers. Look for the high ground. And if T1's not careful, that could be where a few of their Raxes start falling. So they need to you can execute a bit cleaner. Field site communication might be a bit shaky right now. Not quite lining up the shots. Uh, did get word that Cuckoo has not slept oh, in lobby. We were having me. a bit of a chat because he did get vaccinated this morning. Apparently. Oh. So, he, yeah, he, he was being a bit silly in lobby. Radiant's Maybe that's carrying top. over here. We'll see if he can reel his team together to get that initiation. But GXR, they're not going to care about that context. 2K lead their way. They've got the advantage. They just need to find some objectives now. Absolutely. Getting vaccinated on the first day of Pro Series, huh? Yeah. My goodness. Brave. He needs it for brave. Romania, apparently. True. I mean, you he do. That is true. That is fair. Gotta do what you gotta do. Ixar. Smoke up. Radiant are scanning. D wards out. That's gonna reveal the smoke here. T1. Quite, uh, quite defensive now after that last team fight. And would you look at that, Don? Another DD rune there for GXR. <laughs> Beautiful. Ah, uh, the Ice Frog always showing favor to the team with net worth advantage. Always. Every time. Always a team with a slight lead. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. Still, in your dreams, very scary now. 
And they just need, again, they need one of these tier twos to fall. They need to commit. They're worried about being punished for the clump up. Winter's Curse is always going to make you feel that way. And that does bring caution to the forefront here for GXR. They will start to rip through. Ender Dream can still get this done solo. As long as his team isn't completely cut off from him, this should be fine. T1 just holding that high ground. Not going to look for the counterplay yet. Probably going to hold off for the actual tier 3 towers before really throwing bodies forward. Yeah. Great position here from GXR. Good, good. Stuns out. They got the impel there from Joe Cam, but they won't have the. Or maybe they do. Sans is in. We'll call it embrace. Aeon Disc also proc. Cuckoo. Eclipse now out. He's trying to primal split. He cannot get it off. Great control from GXR. He does have buyback though. And they aren't going to rush high ground anyway. GXR, they're more than happy to take their time to keep the farm up. I think that was a mistake. Uh, Zephyr went for the Cold Embrace as Cuckoo went for the dis the unlock on the Aeon Disc. Oh. If he just had the Aeon Disc go off without the Cold Embrace, he could have split and run. So a small mistake on T1's end. GXR capitalize on it. They can't quite reach into the high ground. As a 4v5 with a buyback available, it's still fairly scary with a Winter's Curse on standby. And GXR can look for the safer play, maybe clearing out the bot tier 2 could be it. But their wave is fairly shoved out. So they don't, they don't have instant access to that bot tier 2. Mizu's just trying to clear it out himself. Still trying to invade the high ground here on the triangle. Yeah, that they are. Polison. Start moving in there with Joe Cam. More D wards to come out. 23 Savage. He's going to pop the meta and just start a team Ooh. fight. Polison, that's a lot of damage out. He is going to have the borrowed time going. Savage will not stop. And now Lacrity has jumped in, forcing out the BKB charge. So now meta and BKB is down. GXR, they know they can try to force a fight right after as Alacrity is back in. They found Whiteman on the Lion. Cold Embrace is going to save for now, but there's the Impel out and they just burst him down. Great play again from GXR. T1. It just looks a little bit all over the place right now. Yeah, it's just really scattered. Um, it looked like Savage wanted to go in. The rest of his team wasn't there. Now GXR, they get the smoke up. They clear out the top tier one. And they shove in the bot lane a bit, and they could go for a good wraparound here. Oh, that they could. That's a big target. 23 Savage on the Terra Blade. Hasn't been scouted out quite yet, and looks like he's going to be just fine to, to hide in the tree line. And your Dream finds a very nice neutral item for himself. The Illusion Escape is up. Very, very good. Yeah. Great item on your Luna. You don't have the Manta, though, but you'll still appreciate free Illusions coming out here for IYD. They are still keeping the map locked in. They don't have too long on that Aegis, though. It's going to expire in about 5 seconds, 10 seconds most. So they're going to miss that second life on Luna, and it does expire now. Makes the high ground a little bit less likely to pop out from GXR unless they find a pickoff. They do get the full Satanic up, though. So that could still lead them to take that fight forward as long as they manage to prevent Savage from getting the hits off with a Scotty. And even then, we, we've seen Scotty versus Satanic. It feels like Satanic Active still wins. It's like 200% regen lifesteal. Like, uh, Scotty only drops it by, what, 25%? So you, you still kind of gain out there. 40%. Yeah, you still kind of gain out because of how ridiculous Satanic's Active is. And that should make IYD fairly comfy if they do get into that engage. But again, they play it slow. Another DD up top, Mike. Oh, Look at that. Very good. Another <laughs> double damage rune. And look at that, Lacrity, he's going to scatter it out. He probably can't believe his luck right now. He's calling over in your dream. Come on, sir. I've got the board already. And here he comes in your dream, walking down the red carpet. There's your DD rune. Enjoy. And now you've got to be wondering, should we go again as GXR? Like, even without the Aegis uh, up. Bottom lane. Savage had to BKB TP home from Joe Camp just walking up. Wow. So he's down to... What's that? Six seconds. And they forced the team fight. Team. Top lane. They're going to go in after Cuckoo. Primal Split is going to be popped, but they've already lost that tier 2 top tower. And in your dream, he's just going to stand his ground. They get the Cyclone off, but it may not matter. They've lost all the Brulings now as Cuckoo. He's still going to try and back, but a nice vacuum there from Mizu. Curse, however, is going to buy the time to get the second split off. Back in. There's a nice Earth Spike as well onto three heroes, but it just doesn't matter yet. They have the Abaddon. They'll move in onto the high ground. Whitemon, very low, but the Cold Embrace is going to save the days in your dream. He pops the Satanic. Oh, 
onto the Lena. They'll get Carl down. Now the Eclipse is out. They've got oh. Savage as well. That's a terribly oh, down without buyback. Very bad Ooh. news for T1. But great news for GXR. As they're going to move into their first lane of barracks. There's not really much in the way of stopping them. No, no curse. They do have another... Well, no, they don't have a split for about 60 seconds for the next charge. And they're going to rush tier 4. They know oh they can clear us out really fast with the DD. Yeah, they definitely can. They've even found another target. Oh Zephyr is about to drop, but... Oh, no, he won't make it up. He does not end your dream. They're buying back all they can. GXR... Still 40 seconds without the TBs Carl? in your dream. Now going to move back in. Carl, he got hit by the Impale. Can he survive? With the Cold Embrace out, is it enough? Not quite. The Vacuum's there and the now the jump in. The Impale as well. That's going to be it. GG's called. And if you ask, can GXR beat T1 in this game, number one? The answer is now officially yes. Yes, they definitely can. They just have. Oh, man. GXR, they played so patiently. They, they believed... And their Lina spike, their Luna spike, they managed to get that farm out for IYD. It looked a bit rough, right? Like Alacrity was jumping Cuckoo a lot. Sometimes it would work out, sometimes it wouldn't. At some point it felt like Alacrity's Ag's time was coming out a bit too slow. But T1, they made a lot of small mistakes. There wasn't like a massive mistake. Maybe that one team fight mid was a bit big, but they just make a lot of these small mistakes around the map and they just caught caught off guard. They need to respect a team like GXR. Again, they've been surprising us from the TI qualifiers into the closed qualifiers. They've played spectacularly well and consistently well. And T1, maybe, you know, getting back in the groove of playing against other Southeast Asian teams, that could be a factor as well, right? They've spent yeah. some time outside a region in the major in the ESL. They're back here. They need to get back into the groove because Southeast Asia is just very packed, man. Yeah, it certainly is, John. We, we are going to head to a short 10-minute break, and right after that break, we're going to be back with Game 2 between GXR and T1.